Bonjour, je m'appelle Madame Cave. This is the second project for year four and it's called an animal extraordinaire, an extraordinary animal. It would be suitable to do this project if you are in your second year of language learning and maybe you'd like to do project one for year four first before you do this but it's not absolutely necessary. So what you're going to create is an extraordinary animal like the one you see on the screen. So part of one animal and part of another animal making a new very strange animal which you're going to give a new name to. And you're going to describe this in French and illustrate it. The aims of the project are, as I said, you're going to design and describe an extraordinary animal. You're going to use a French-English dictionary to find the names of the animals you need. And then you're going to work out whether the nouns are masculine or feminine, if you don't know what that means yet, or you'll find out later. And choose the right word for A to go in front of it. And then you want to put a colour of the noun and then you want to write some short sentences to describe your extraordinary animal uh, using the words it is and it is not in French. Let's get started. The first really useful phrase we want to use, learn is it is or this is. Maybe you know this already, we'll find out. I've used that strange little man there with his fingers pointing down because he's pointing down and going, it is. So every time you say it is in French, you might want to do that action and it might help you to remember it is. So there are two sounds in the word for it is. We've got the snake sound, which is s. Make an action with your hand for a snake as you do that. S. And the boy pumping air, pumping down, e eh, is the sound, e. Eh. So we've got a s and an e. Eh, and if you put those together, you get s. But how do you write this? Well, a s. It could be an, an S, an S goes S in English and in French. But there's also another letter both in English and French that goes S, and that is a C. A C when it's followed by an E or an I, and it goes E. Eh. S, E. Eh. In this case, it's an E that's following it, so that C is going s before the e. Eh. Now we've got an apostrophe here, which I'm going to explain in a moment, if you don't know why it's there, but let's just forget about that for the minute. So we've got a C going s, an E going e, eh, and then we've got two final silent consonants. You're probably getting the idea by now, especially if you've done the other project, that there are lots of consonants on the ends of words which are silent. And we've got an S and a T which we write but don't say. So, S. So have a go at saying that and do your action of pointing your fingers down and going S. S. Right, let's find out what that apostrophe is doing there. So the word for it or the, this is s and the tennis player e sound, which is you put a lot of effort, have a go at this, put a lot of, a lot of effort in as you hit the tennis ball, uh, so you get a s and an u uh, and s means it or this. This word here, e, eh, is the is bit. So why has that E disappeared here and become an apostrophe? So instead of writing CE, we've written C apostrophe. Well, when you get that U uh sound on the end of a word in French and it's followed by a vowel, A-E-I-O-U, and this E is one of those, a vowel, 
the French removed that U sound to make it easier to say and put an apostrophe instead. So instead of going SUE, which is kind of all very jumpy and the French like their language to flow, they take away that U, that E, and they put an apostrophe. So now it's SE. So C apostrophe or CE can mean it or this. C apostrophe when the next letter is a vowel. So SE. SE. Did you know that there are in fact two words for A, A in French? There is this one and this one. They look quite similar, don't they, really? UN, the two letters UN make the sound that this boy is representing. He is putting his hand to his ear. He hasn't quite heard what someone's saying. He's not being very polite because he's going, uh. try that sound. Uh. And every time you see a U followed by an N in a word, you go, uh. But this UN is actually just by itself because UN is one of the words for A. Uh. Try that. Uh. The other word for A is the UN, but it's got an E on the end. Now, as you probably know, E's are normally silent on the ends of words, so that's not sounded. This means that the U makes a sound by itself and the N makes a sound by itself. So a U making a sound by itself is the lady holding a nose, she smelt a smell, make this sound short and powerful, so she smells a smell, e, e, hold your nose and go, e, now put a n after it and we get, in, in, so we've got, un, and we've got, in, and both those words mean, a, so why do we have, two words for A in French. In English, we only have one. Well, what type of word often follows A? A bag, a pen, a table, a chair, a dog, a tree. Those are all people, places and things. And people, places and things are nouns. So A it normally goes in front of a noun. Now this is my action here to help me remember what a noun is. When I can't remember what a noun is, I put my hand to my eyes and I look around and everything I can see in the room, if I can put a or the in front of it, will be a noun. So I can see a wall, a wall, the wall, that makes sense, that's a noun. I can see a table, a table, the table, that makes sense, so table is a noun. Chair, a chair, the chair, yes, that goes in front of chair, that is a noun. So a very simple way of remembering what a noun is when you forget is if you put your hand to your eyes, you look around the room and you think, ah, yes, anything I can see is a noun. So A goes in front of a noun. So, un and un are going to go in front of a noun. Now, this is where French is different to English. In English, we just have nouns. But in French, we have two groups of nouns. They have two groups of nouns in Spanish, in Italian. They have three groups of nouns in German. Every language works in a different way. You have to find out how that language works. And in French, it has two groups of nouns. And they have names. One group of noun is called, now this, I'm going to sound it out, maybe not how you would expect if you've never seen this word before, masculine. So we have a group of nouns called masculine nouns and a group of nouns called Feminine nouns. Have a go at saying those words. So we've got masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine. 
So because we've got two groups of nouns, we have a different word for A to put, go in front of a noun when it's masculine, and a different word for A to go in front of a noun if it's feminine. So, in English, we can say a or an or one. In French, we go un if it's a masculine noun and une if it's a feminine noun. So, two words for a in French or an or one. If you find out it's a masculine noun, un. If you find out it's a feminine noun, une. So, you have a go at them saying these words before me. This one, un, and this one, une. How are you going to remember which is which? How, can you think of a way now of thinking when it's a masculine noun, I've got to remember un, and when it's a feminine noun, une. If you haven't got an idea at the moment, keep thinking. Because we're going to use these words a lot and it'll be good if you've got a way of remembering that it's un for masculine and une for feminine. So let's see if we can put these nouns in the right box. So the mouse. In front of it, it's got une, so it's a feminine noun. This one has got Un in front of it, so a cat is a masculine noun. A book, is it masculine or feminine? Well, it's got un in front of it, so it's a masculine noun. Pizza has got un in front of it, so it's a feminine noun. Frog has got un in front of it, so it's a feminine noun. And bag, a bag has got un in front of it, so it is a masculine noun. So you don't, you'll never know whether a word is masculine or feminine. You just learn them as you go along. So those three are masculine nouns and those three are feminine nouns. If you happen to say une in front of lever instead of un, a French person would know exactly what you meant. But we want to try to get this right because it's going to be important as we learn more French. So every time you learn a noun, try to find out whether it's a masculine noun or whether it's a feminine noun. So here are two more nouns, a pen and a ruler. But before we have a look at sounding them out and looking at the spelling, let's have a look at the top here. So UN. If you get a UN, as we've seen, it makes that uh sound. If you get a U, it makes the hold your nose U. Uh. Now, do you remember any of these from the other projects? A letter O is the shocked lady. You put your hands to your cheeks and you go, oh, oh. So you see an O? Oh. That's normally at the end of a word. A letter O goes, oh. Now, for the, the boy with the smile, smiley m mouth, ee, ee, is the sound. I think you probably have seen it as an I before making that sound, but also a Y can make that sound. Ee. An E with the accent line going down is the boy pumping air. Eh. That was also the E in eh in se. So an E before two consonants and an E with an accent going down, eh. I'm sure you've probably met this one before, the letter R. It's the gardling sound. Have a go at this one. <sighs> and the G is just like in English, the gorilla sound. Beat your chest. G. So we've got un, u, o, i, e, g. So let's have a go at sounding out this masculine noun, a Pen in French is a masculine noun, so we're going to say un at the start, and we say s, t, the letter Y, e, u, and o. If I don't put a picture and it's just written in black, it means it sounds like the, the letter sounds like English. So un stylo, un stylo. 
and the ruler is un, it's a feminine noun, so it's going to be un at the start, then a ch, e, g, l, silent e, un règle, un règle. Work very hard at getting this ch sound at the start, un règle, un règle. Can, we, can you say this one? Un stylo. And can you say this one? Une règle. Une règle. Okay, so if we wanted to say it is a pen, we will use this expression, it is, this phrase, it is. But look, I've not put this T in grey to show it's silent. I've put this T in black and I've underlined it because now we are going to sound it. Now I don't know if you know this rule in French but silent letters can be sounded when followed by a vowel. So if there's a vowel following, often the silent letter will sound, and it's going to sound here because we've got a U, which is a vowel, and a U here. So when we say it is a pen, we're not going to say se, we're going to now sound the T, we're going to go set un stylo, set un stylo. It just makes it easier to say than going set un stylo, which is very jumpy. The language isn't flowing. Make it flow, sound the T. Set un stylo. So do your action, the man pointing down and go, if you've got a pen nearby, point to it and go, set un stylo. Set un stylo. And now let's do it for a ruler. If you've got a ruler nearby, or pretend you're pointing to a ruler. Set une règle. Set une règle. So here are four nouns. A cat, a bag, a pizza, a mouse. Now we saw these a moment ago. We saw the spellings, but we're going to have a go at spelling them now. If you haven't got a piece of paper to hand, you might want to just stop the video a minute and get yourself a piece of paper or something to write on and a pen or a pencil. And we'll see if we can spell these together. Okay, two masculine ends, a cat and a bag. So we know how it's going to start, don't we? It's going to start un. So you don't have to write that down. Un. Now a cat is this. The shushing girls. Now, which letter makes the shushing girl sound? Do you know? It's a CH. So if you see a CH in French, you go finger to your lips. Shh. So write down on your piece of paper CH. Then we've got an boy eating the apple sound a ah. and a ah, like it sounds is an a so if you see an a you go a ah, and that's going to be the next sound in the spelling of cat so we've got un sha un sha now those are all the sounds that you hear but there is in fact a silent letter a silent consonant i don't know you can guess it before i show you it's a t you're going to write it on your paper now, but you're not going to say it. Un chat. Un chat. Okay, a bag. And it's a masculine noun, so you should be already writing down on your paper. Un. Then it's an S. S. Then it's an A again. That's an A. And then it's a C, which makes the same sound as English. Un sac. Un chat. Un sac. Right, let's have a go at the feminine nouns now. So the feminine noun begins un, un. So u, u, n, silent, e. And then there's a p, and then there's an e. Now we saw in stilo it was a y, but normally and more often it's an i, and that's what it is here. So you see an i, e. So it's un, p, two Z's, z, and then a sound, a. So it's actually the same spelling as English. It, we're just going e, the un pizza, un pizza. Finally, a mouse. It's a feminine noun, so it's un, and then it's a s, 
and then it's the chimpanzee now do you remember the chimpanzee sound you make a chimpanzee action you put your lips very tight and you go ooh, ooh, ooh. have a go at that ooh. and ooh is made with an o and a u an o and a u go ooh. when you see an o and a u in french it's going to make the sound ooh. so it's un sou ooh. Then it's got the gardling sound, and the gardling sound is a letter R. So it's un sour. Then it's the smiley man sound, E. And then a final consonant, and this time it's an S. And that spells un souri. You're going to write the S, but you're not going to say un souri. Let's have a go at saying them together, the masculine nouns. Un chat, un sac, une pizza. Une souris. Okay, so if we want to say it is a bag, we say, can you do it? C'est un sac. It's a pizza. C'est une pizza. It's a cat. C'est un chat. It's a mouse. You do it. C'est une souris. Okay, on your piece of paper, write down set. You don't have to write that line underneath the T. That's just there to remind you to sound the T. And then choose one of these. Un chat, une souris, une pizza. And then put a full stop because it's the end of your sentence. So you've written on your piece of paper. C'est un sac, c'est un chat, c'est une pizza, c'est une souris. If you haven't done that yet, just pause the video a minute. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to say a sentence myself. And if it's the same sentence as you, you're going to get yourself a point. So let's have a go. C'est un chat. If you wrote c'est un chat, put your hand in the air and go champion, which means you are a champion and you've got one point. If you want to have another go, pause the video. Write down a sentence because I'm going to say another one. C'est une pizza. Are you champion or champion? Again, champion is what you say if you are a girl. Champion if you're a boy. And one more. Pause the video if you want to have another go at this. Write down a sentence. This time I'm going to say... C'est une souris. C'est une souris. Are you champion for that one as well? Now, if we want to say it is not, in English we go it is, two words, it is not, three words. We, so we've added one more word to make it say not. In French we need to add two words. And we're going to make what I call a verb sandwich. You're going to put one word for not in front of the verb and the other verb for not after the verb. So one of the words for not, well, it can be written in two ways. An N with the tennis player E, do you remember that one? Make the action and go, uh, hit the imaginary ball very hard and go, uh, so it can be N or it can just be N apostrophe. We'll come back to why it's apostrophe again in a minute. N or N, and after the verb, P, A, silent S, PA, N, PA. And in between, you find the verb that's in your sentence and put these words either side. This little bear here is doing an action I do when I want to remember what a verb is. So I swing my arms around and I think, ah, oh, that's an action. I'm swinging my arms, that's an action, because a verb is a word of action. So next time you're not sure what a verb is, try that. Swing your arms around like the bear and think, ah, yes, it's an action. So a verb is an action word. Okay, so how are we going to make it is, se, say it is not? Well, first of all, we need to find the verb in se. Is it the s, which means it, or is it the e, which means is? 
doesn't sound like a verb like jump or walk, does it? But there is a verb there, and the verb is is. If you say it is a pen, the pen is in the action of being a pen. It seems strange, but that's what it is. Is is a verb. So eh. So around this word, we're going to put that n and that pa. So there's the verb. We're going to put one of these two here. Which one will it be? Will it be that one or will it be that one? It's this one. Why is it not this one? Do you know? It's the same reason when we had the s and the e, because that u is not going to sound good followed by a vowel. So we take away the e and we put an apostrophe and then pa. But what's happened here? Why have I taken that apostrophe away now and put the E back? That is because there isn't a vowel there now. So we don't need to worry about taking that E away. We can put it back. So now it's that other word for it, S. N, E, PA. S, N, E, PA. S, N, E, PA means it is not. You have a go at that. Ce n'est pas, it is not. Ce n'est pas, ce n'est pas. So we've got it is. Can you say that? Do you want to do the action of the man? Point your fingers down. C. It is a cat. This time we're going to sound the T. Have a go at that. C'est un chat. And it is not. Make a cross with your hands. And go, ce n'est pas, ce n'est pas, the cross meaning it's not, ce n'est pas, c'est, c'est un chat, ce n'est pas. So it is a cat, c'est un chat, but if we wanted to say that this mouse is not a cat, we would go, ce n'est, now hold on. That S is no longer silent. It's going to be sounded. Why? Because that silent letters can be sounded when followed by a vowel. So now we're going to sound that because we've got the vowel in the, uh, the U. So to say it is not a cat, ce n'est pas un chat. Ce n'est pas un chat. C'est un chat. Try that one. C'est un chat. Try this one. Ce n'est pas un chat. Ce n'est pas un chat. And can you hear that the S is making a buzzy B sound? When an S has got a vowel on either side of it, it makes a buzzy B Z sound. Ce n'est pas un chat. Ce n'est pas un chat. Okay, so if we want to say it is not a pizza, you have a go. Ce n'est pas une pizza, if you want to say it's not a mouse. Ce n'est pas une souris, if you want to say it's not a bag. Ce n'est pas un sac. Okay, if you've got your piece of paper in front of you, Take your pen or pencil and write a sentence starting Sunibaz and then finish it with either a second pizza, a chat, or une souris. Don't forget your full stop at the end. Now I am going to say two sentences. If neither of those sentences are yours, you are going to say champion because you are the champion because I didn't guess which one it was. Okay, you ready? Ce n'est pas un sac. Ce n'est pas une souris. 
So if you had ce n'est pas un chat or ce n'est pas une pizza, you can say champion. Have another go at writing down a sentence. Stop the video if you need to, because I'm going to say the sen sentence again in a minute and see if you can manage to choose one I'm not going to say. Here we go. Ce n'est pas un chat. Ce n'est pas une souris. Oh, I was a bit tricky there because I used the same word and sentence I'd used in the first go. But if you didn't have either of those, you can say champion, champion. So let's think about the animals that you are going to want to have in your extraordinary animal and it they might be words you've never met already in French so you're going to need to look them up in the dictionary. Now I suggest using this dictionary here, this online dictionary, you did project one, I, I showed you this before. In the search box put an animal, I've put giraffe, giraffe, okay, in English it's got two f's, and this is what they came up with. So in big, bold, black is it in English. Underneath in the square brackets with the little sound icon is telling you how to sound it in English. So we don't need that. Then it says noun. That's good because we need it to be a noun. Remember, hand to your eyes. Can you see it? A giraffe, the giraffe. Yes, it's noun. Okay. Now in red is the word for giraffe in French and you can see it's almost the same as in English except it's only got one F. Now the next letter in black is important because this is telling us whether it's masculine or feminine. It's not part of the word, it's an information. It's in that slanty writing called italics and anything in slanty writing in the dictionary in italics is giving you information. So F what do you think it stands for? Do you think it stands for masculine or feminine? I think it stands for feminine because it begins with an F like feminine does. So giraffe is how you say it in French is the word for giraffe and it's a feminine noun. So if it's a feminine noun, uh, if we want to say a giraffe, are we going to say un or une? Uh, if it's feminine, we're going to say une giraffe is how you say a giraffe. Let's try another one. So I put in the search box elephant. English tells us how to say it. it's a noun. Good. And here in the pinky red is the word in French. It's the same spelling as English except it's got these accent lines and these accent lines tell us how to say the E which is what I call my Italian sound. E. It's got two of those. E leaf, and I'm not going to send the T because it's a final sign or consonant. An elephant, elephant. Now, in italics, in slanty writing, little m, it tells us it's masculine. So, if it's a masculine noun, to say an elephant is un. But I'm not going to go un because it's got a vowel after it. I'm going to sound that silent letter and I'm going to go. Un elephant. Un elephant. You have to think about this in French. It's a very common thing you hear. Two words sounding like one because they run into one another. Like we had with set un. Ce n'est pas un. Un elephant. It sounds like one word but it's actually two because I'm sounding a silent letter. Okay. I suggest now that you stop the video and you go to the online dictionary and see if you can find the words in French for a goose, a snake, a gerbil, a goat, a snail, a monkey. And when you find them, write them down on a piece of paper and then look. Has it got a little M in italics or a little F? If it's got a little M, you're going to write uh, in front of it because I want you to write a goose, a snake, a gerbil and if it's feminine un. So I'm going to reveal what they should be in a moment but you can stop the video now and go and have a practice at using the online dictionary. 
Let's have a look then. So you should have found that that was the word for goose. It's feminine, so it's une. That's the word for snake. It's un. That's the word for gerbil. It's feminine, so it's une. That's the word for goat. It's feminine, so it's une. That's the word for snail. Masculine. Un. That's the word for monkey. It's masculine, so it's un. I hope you managed to find those. Okay. So those three nouns, animal nouns, were masculine. And those three animal nouns were feminine. Un for masculine and une for feminine. Now you're going to describe the colour of your extraordinary animal. Now, if you've done any of the earlier projects or you've done French already, you've possibly met these colours before. Certainly in the Year 3 project, they were in that. So, let's see if we can sound them out. So, for red, silent E on the end, we've got the ch, mm, fast car sound. Move your finger in front of you as a fast car Follow the fast car and make the sound rouge. A b and a u at the start of blue. Bull. An e u. The lady has discovered something nasty on her shoe. She's scraping it off, and as she scrapes it off, she goes Ugh, bleu. So rouge, bleu. The fast car again for the j. The a u this time is making the o sound with a n. So, jaune, rouge, bleu, jaune. Green is v, the e, we've already seen this. E, we've seen the r going ugh, and it's a silent t, vert. We've already seen in this project the g going g, the r going ugh, the i going e. We've got a silent s, so for great, gris. Let's have a go at saying together, it's red, it's blue, it's yellow. So, we're going c. Rouge, c'est bleu, c'est jaune, c'est vert, c'est gris. Let's have a look at the words for these colours. I'm going to go just a little bit more slowly in case you've never met them before. So these are all the sounds in the colours. And here are the actions. Now, we've met those four already just now, so let's do them together. Smiley T, pumping air, E, gardling sound, fast car, zh. Now, do you remember the baby crying sound? Rub your eyes and go, wah, wah. Okay, do you remember the head on the desk sound? You've had a hard day, head on the desk. Oh, that's an English sound like oh in hot. Oh. Shot lady sound, we've had that in jaune. Oh. Now, what about the clown in the old fashioned car? I don't know if you've met this one before. You put your hand on the old fashioned car horn and you go oh, oh. That is not an English sound, that's a French sound. Oh. Try that one. Oh. We've had this one, of course, a lot today. Uh. Uh, and the buzzy bee sound that I was talking about before goes z. So let's do them together. Top line e, e, ch, j, wa. Bottom line o, 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 z. So which letters make those sounds? See if you can say before I match them up. Well, I'm going to do one. I'm pretty sure you all know. That is hand to the ear. Uh. Okay, letter I. I think you might know. E. Now, E. We've met quite a lot of E's. This is an E with a T at the end, but it's still the same E that we saw earlier in C. And it's E. G before an E. Now that's a harder one. A G before an E goes zh. Zh. Fast go. Zh. Head on the desk. 
is oh, because that's like English, O oh, going oh, that in French you don't normally get that at the end of a word, you don't get it going oh, at the end of a word it make, the O oh makes the O oh sound. But in one of these words there is a special O oh sound, and it's not that the sound is special, but it's when it's used. It's an O before an S and an E. That's quite complicated. But in this word, when you have an O before an S and E, the O goes O. Right. Buzzy B. Buzzy, buzzy B. Now, z, z sounds like an Z, but we haven't got a Z here. It is, in fact, an S between vowels. Do you remember when I said ce n'est pas un? The S meant a z because it was between vowels. So when you get an S between vowels it goes z. I think you probably know the R goes ugh. Now which goes with which? Baby crying wah. Well it, you think it might have a W but there's nothing with a W. It's an O and an I. O and an I goes wah. And it's an A and an N that goes on, which is completely different to English, because in English it's an, isn't it? But in French you see an A N, on. Right, piece of paper again, because we're going to try and spell together these words. Okay, so a V followed by an E, which is an I, followed by an O, which is O like in English, then an L, then it's an E, E, and the silent letter is a T, and that spells the word for purple, and we sound it out V O L E, V O L E, V O L E, try saying that, V O L E. Okay, brown, we've got a B, then we've got the gardling sound, which is an R, and I think you probably know by now that un is UN, so brun, brun is brown. Pink, we start with our gardling, which is an R. Then we've got the O. Now normally O in the, mi in the middle of a word doesn't go O, but it does in this one, so it's an O. And then the buzzy bees. Now you remember that wasn't a Z here, it was an S because it's between vowels. That means the silent letter, so it means the silent letter must be a vowel and it's the E because E is a silent. So rose, rose, violet, brun, rose, black. We start with a N. Now what, which letters made the baby crying wa sound? It was an O and an I, and at the end there's an R, Ch, noir, noir. Orange, lot of sounds, lot of letters. So we've got the O, like in English, O. We've got the Ch, gardling R, ON. Now, do you remember what that was? It was an A-N. Then the fast car, Z. In this word, it's a G before the silent E. So yes, it does look like the English, but we sound it out orange, 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 orange. Let's try them so far. Violet, brun, rose, noir, orange. And the last one for white is a B and a O. We've got another O like we had in orange, so it's an A-N. And as a silent consonant we've not seen very much yet, which is a C. Blanc. Don't sound the C. Blanc. Blanc, orange, rose, noir, brun, violet. And there are all the colours. See if you can say them. I'll point to them before me. Rouge. Bleu, jaune, vert, gris, brun, noir, blanc, rose, orange, violet. OK, let's have a go at colour bingo. Write down on your piece of paper four colours, any of the four colours. 
Okay, now we're going to play this in a slightly different way. I am going to call out the colours and you cross off the colour if it's on your paper. But you are trying to still have a colour on your paper by the time I get to stop because I'm not going to weed them all out. So see if you can manage to still have a colour that you've not crossed out. Are you ready? Rouge, noir, bleu, jaune, rose, blanc, orange. And say one more. Vert. So I didn't say gris and I didn't say violet and I didn't say brun. If you've got any of those on your paper and they're not crossed off, you can say champion. Right, we're going to, dis to describe the colour of this cat. We're going to say it is a grey cat. So we know how to say it is, c'est, and we're going to go set because the next letter is a vowel. So we're going to go set un chat. But where do we put the word grey, gris? Do we put it here, like we're doing in English, because we've got grey and then we've got cat? Or do you know if we put it somewhere else? Well, cat is the noun. Do you remember the action for a noun? Looking around, hand to your, hand to your eyes. My action for an adjective is a rather strange looking picture here. Put your hand to your eyes as though you're looking around. That's the noun. And then put your thumb to your head and then whittle your fingers at the side, a bit like that girl's doing. You don't have to stick your tongue out as well. That is the action for an adjective because we have taken the noun, hand to our eyes, and we've put the action for adjective with it. We've added something to the noun. We are making the noun more interesting by putting our hand to our head. And that's what adjectives do. They add to the noun. I think they should be called ad nouns, really, rather than adjectives, but they're not. They're called adjectives because adjectives add to the noun and they make them more interesting. So grey is the adjective and cat is the noun. So in English, we put the adjective and then we put the noun. But in French, it's different. Remember, languages work in different ways. So just because in English, you put the adjective and then the noun. It doesn't mean in any other language that you learn it works like that. You need to find out. And in French, the colour adjective goes after the noun. So if you wanted to say it's, oh, I've put a red cat. I really should have put a grey cat, but never mind. It's a red cat. You put set un chat and then you put the colour. So I put rouge, but it could be gris if you wanted to say a grey cat. So I've got the noun and then I've got the colour adjective after. So what you're really saying is it's a cat red. The French tell you what noun it is first and then they tell you what the adjective is. C'est un chat rouge, c'est un chat gris. Here are lots of unusual coloured cats. Let's have a go at describing them. Black cat. You remember that was noir? So you go, c'est un chat noir. It's a red cat. C'est un chat rouge. It's a white cat. That's blanc. C'est un chat blanc. It's a pink cat. Do you remember that was rose? C'est un chat rose. It's a green cat. C'est un chat vert. It's a blue cat. C'est un chat bleu. It's a yellow cat. C'est un chat jaune. It's a purple cat. C'est un chat violet. Okay, I'm going to name one of those cats. See if you can touch the screen and touch the correct cat before I point to it. Are you ready? C'est un chat jaune. C'est un chat rouge. C'est un chat bleu. C'est un chat rose. 
Okay, I'm going a bit faster now. C'est un chat violet. C'est un chat noir. C'est un chat blanc. C'est un chat vert. Did you guess that? Because that was the only one I hadn't done. Okay, so I'm going noun, then adjective. And that's what you do in French. You put the noun and then you put the colour adjective after it. Okay, I've got a spinner here. When I click here, it spins around and it lands on a colour. So, write down on your paper which colour you think it's going to land on. But I want you to write the whole sentence. So, you write set un chat and then write the colour you think it's going to land on. It's totally random. I don't know. You don't know. Uh, but don't forget to put your full stop after the colour because it's the end of your sentence. So, are you ready? Here we go. If you've not written, just pause the video a minute. C'est un chat rose. If you wrote c'est un chat rose, c'est champion. Let's have another go. If you've already got a point for that, you can write another sentence. Otherwise, stick with what you've got. Or if you want to change, you can and pause the video. C'est un chat orange. Are you saying champion or not? Let's have another go. Ah, oh, sometimes it lands on the same one. C'est un chat orange. And let's try one more. If you want to write a new sentence, you can. Pause the video and here we go. C'est un chat bleu. If your animal is two colours, like this snail is green and orange, you want to join it with the word and. The word for and is et, and et in and you pronounce that is my Italian sound, e. Try that, e. So we're going to say it's an orange and green, and this word looks like animal in English, and that's what it means in French, but let's sound it out. Animal, animal, animal. Same spelling in English sounds different in French because letters don't always make the same sound in different languages. Try that. Animal, animal. Okay, shall we try reading it? C'est un, I'm going to sound that N because there's a vowel after it. I'm going to sound that T because there's a vowel after it. C'est un animal orange et vert. C'est un animal orange et vert. The noun and then two adjectives after the noun joined with and. C'est un animal orange et vert. So let's see if you can rearrange these letters here to say it is a black and white animal. You might want to pause the video and write it on your piece of paper because I am now going to rearrange them. Set uh, animal noir et blanc. How did I know that blanc was going to go last? It's because it's got the full stop. It's an animal black and white. That's the order you put it in French. C'est un animal noir et blanc. In English you'd say it's a black and white animal. Pause the video and sort these ones out. Here we go. C'est un animal blanc et brun. It's a white and brown animal. So, time to think about what your extraordinary animal is going to look like and how you're going to describe it. I suggest you get yourself a nice piece of paper. Your heading can be un animal extraordinaire. This is an adjective. It's going after the noun animal and it looks like the word extraordinary in English and that's what it means in French, an animal extraordinaire. Then you're going to 
think of two animals you would like to draw or you can draw and you're going to draw part of one and connect it and part of another. So we've got a giraffe here and a fish and poisson is a fish at the back. And to describe it, I've said, c'est un animal orange et brun. It's an orange and brown animal. Ce n'est pas une giraffe. It is not a giraffe. Ce n'est pas un poisson. It is not a fish. C'est un, it's a, now this word you wouldn't find in the dictionary, giraffon, because I have made it up. I have taken the first letters of giraffe and the last letters of poisson fish and I've made a new word, c'est un giraffon, and that's what you're going to do. So, for example, if you take the word for pig and take the word for bee and put them together, to make my new word, I took the first four letters, you can see I've put in blue there, of pig, and the last few letters of B, and I make this new word up. And I decided one was un, one was une. I decided this new word was going to be a masculine noun, so I put un. You can decide whatever you put un or une, it doesn't matter because it's your new word. To make, to, I had a cow, the back of a cow and the front of a mouse. So I took the first four letters of cow, V-A-C-H, and the last letters of mouse, R-I-S, and I made this new word, vacherie, and I decided it was going to be feminine because both these nouns were feminine, but you could have been un if you want. That's entirely up to you. So this is your plan. This is what your sentence is going to be five sentences. You're going to draw your animal two animals joined together, kind of five sentences. The words I've highlighted in yellow are the words that you will ch change. So you will write, set an animal, you'll say the colours. Look, I've got three colours here. So I've got and between the last two, just as you would in English. Rose, noir et orange. Pink, black and orange. So you look at all the colours of the two combined animals and say what they are. Full stop, don't forget. Then you say, it is not the name of one of the animals. It is not the name of the other animal, and then it is, and then, how I showed you before, you make up your new spelling. You probably want to come back it, to this slide in the video when you come to write your uh, sentences so you can remember how to set it out. And also on this slide here, you've got all the spellings of the colours in case you've forgotten how to spell those. So there you are. That's what you're going to do now. Hopefully you're going to make your own extraordinary animal, an animal extraordinaire. You're going to draw it and then you're going to write your sentences to describe it. Thinking about using se, ce n'est pas, and putting the colour adjective after the noun. Don't forget to share this with someone when you finish, someone in your family, at home, or your teacher. Uh, and you never know, maybe one day I'll get to see some of them. It would be lovely to see what you have created. And can you read them out aloud? So if you're finding words you haven't found before for animals, think about all the sounds and letters we've been working on. And can you sound it out? And don't forget the silent letters. If you want to know any more about these actions that I use for phonics, it's from a book called Physical French Phonics, and you can see the website there. So that's it for now. Au revoir!